The fight game continues to prove that time remains undefeated always. Oh! No! Oh! There it is. No! Oh! The journey of a champion often ends in the most unsavory of fashions. Men and women once on top of the world through a meteoric rise, now crestfallen, forgotten and discarded. So often it's the mentality that gets them to the summit that becomes their end. A refusal to give up, in denial of their physical decline. The brain may be intact, but when the body fails at the top level, it's a swift and brutal end. Volkanovski's cruel twist of fate would prove as such just the other week, as the young and hungry El Matador slayed the champ where he stood. On the steep decline that follows, those who refuse to hang up the gloves find a bloody and bruised path to retirement becoming nothing more than stepping stones for the next big superstars. Once company men and invaluable assets, then a statistical layup for a hungry prospect. Dana White spares no man or woman, not even his favorites. And once your expiry date hits, there is no mercy. These are the UFC fighters Dana White sacrificed. Getting on the wrong side of the boss is the biggest mistake any fighter can make. When a man with his influence holds all of the cards, it takes little more than a flick of a finger to send a fighter's career into the gutter. Frank Shamrock is an irrelevant jackass. He's a two-faced lion chump. That's what you are, Frank Shamrock. What have you done for mixed martial arts in the last 10 years? What have you done? You haven't done anything. 209's Nate Diaz would eventually fall into that category. Despite his glittering career and success, not as a champ, but a fan favorite. And even with the meteoric rise he would go on to have, Diaz's relationship with Dana early on was volatile to say the least. Nate? Yeah. The kid makes really good money, you know? And the unfortunate part is he's not a needle mover. His brother is a needle mover, he's not. Stockton's very own would of course prove that statement wrong in the most epic of fashions, the short notice dismantling of the sport's premier product, Conor McGregor. Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor, here we go! Again, Diaz connects. Look out! Look, look out for the guillotine! The guillotine! Now he's, he's got, got the back. He's got now! That's it! He's got the chance! Nate Diaz! He's got it! He has done, done it! He, he it. is all over! Nate Diaz beats Conor McGregor! Motherfuckers. <laughs> The subsequent rematch, although one he would lose narrowly, catapulted him further into superstardom alongside the Notorious. Two men intertwined in a historic rivalry that was never meant to be. By all metrics and accounts, White had found himself an accidental superstar, one he would milk every ounce of revenue from over the years. You know, Rousey, McGregor level, level star with Nate Diaz, given the way people are reacting to him now. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty tough to deny. He's a needle mover now. <laughs> Eventually though, at least in the boss's eyes, his time would be up. Diaz's noticeable lack of activity in the last part of his career was telling of behind the scenes issues. A long vocal member of the roster, it was little surprise given his nature that he would air out any grievances he had with the company. Claims of being refused release from his contract to fight elsewhere had put him in Dana's black book. And from that very moment, an arduous path of freedom against the top up and coming welterweights lay ahead. The first of which was against the now 170 pound king, Leon Edwards. A matchup that in 2022 scratched the heads of all. Leon sat firmly as the number three ranked in the division, whilst Diaz's best years were almost entirely in the one below. It reeked of conspiracy, punishment of sorts for Nate's insolence. On paper and in the cage, it was a total mismatch. Borderline psychopathic matchmaking that represented a far cry from the UFC's pristine and professional image. But as is now customary with the Diaz bros, the never say die attitude inside and out of the cage would result in one of the sport's most iconic moments. Oh, oh, big oh, left from Edwards, oh, once again acknowledged yeah. by Nate. Good shot by Leon. Position, but Nate. Oh, oh. Elbow. nice elbow there from Leon. Oh. 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 oh, he hurt him. Oh, my goodness. goodness. He's got him hurt. of this five-round affair! Wow. Wow. He would bow out as the loser, but he had not just remained in the hearts of fans, but reminded them of what it meant to be a fighter, something the boss had perhaps long forgotten. That very act of resilience in the fifth round represented defiance against those above. And for Dana, it was one that had to be stamped out through a debt of bloodshed. Nate's final fight on his deal would finally grant him long yearn for freedom. But on the other side, money and crossover fights lay. The ultimate price had to be paid. And UFC 279 would be the day of judgment. The only question was, who was the fearsome prospect standing in his way? Do you believe him now? 
Hamzat Shimaev has firmly put the welterweight top 10 on notice. He broke the modern UFC record with three wins in the shortest time, and he's shot to stardom. Oh, he's flattened them off. Well, he's eating a lot of big shots here. It's over. That's that it. That is it. Hamzat Shimaev remarkably does it again. Everybody, I come here for everybody. Kill everybody. Ah! Sweden's latest Dagestani import, Hamzat Shemaev, had arrived to the UFC in explosive fashion, looking nigh invincible in his opening outings. By all accounts and predictions, a future champion, a guaranteed superstar in the making. His upwards trajectory could not differ further from the aging Diaz, and ability-wise, at their career points, it was a laughable comparison. But Dana White would make the fight. Nate knew himself he was being fed to the dogs for one last time. They're not gonna let me go. And you're not uh, gonna let me go unless it's off of somebody. I gotta make somebody for you. you. Well, you're welcome. Let's make you. Why do you see me disrespecting and making me be like their fall guy or something? F him, f them, f everybody. The tale of the hungry prospect and the aging vet cycle as old as time itself. But through a twist of fate from the MMA gods, there would be salvation for Stockton yet. The undefeated Hamzat Chimaev. 178 and a half, the official weight for Hamzat Shimaev. His adversary missing weight, so drastically that the fight would be pulled entirely, swiftly replaced with a far more fitting opponent that night. Presenting the former interim UFC lightweight champion, Tony Elkakuhi! El Kukui was a man on a similar trajectory to Nate. Long past his prime as the fearsome boogeyman, this opportunity was a chance to get back in the win column and claw back some of his fighting prime. In the end, Diaz would have the fairy tale ending he so long desired, much to the masked ire of the boss. All I know is there's been a love-hate relationship with me and the UFC the whole time I've been in this in this organization, but at the end of the day, I love the UFC. Uh, shout out to Dana White. This is his house, he's been here forever. It's been a blast having him here. Uh, you know, I wish him well. Whatever he moves on to do, I wish him nothing but the best. If he's starting his own organization or, you know, getting into promoting or, or doing something else, it's, uh, I wish him nothing but the best of luck. His money fueled bout against Jake Paul proved that his in the cage sacrifices too would not be in vain, earning more than a once humble kid from Stockton could ever dream of. And I think this clip of Diaz back in the day represents him to a T. From then to now, as a man who simply wanted one thing in life. What is the game plan going out against him? The game plan is to go in there, hit him with some good shit, don't get hit, and uh, come home with a pocket full of cash. Diaz's story was a happy ending, but for a man like BJ Penn, his career conclusion could not be further different. One of the sport's early pioneers, the coin prodigy's legacy remains undeniable. BJJ Ace with the tenacity and resolve to achieve godhood in mixed martial arts. Hey, BJ yeah. Penn was a motherfucker, man. A gas tank that was off the charts. Right. When you got a guy who's already as talented as BJ with zero fear of getting tired, right, right. he was the GOAT. His prime may not have been unrivaled compared to some of the sport's greatest, but as a two-division champion in the early era of the UFC, he had gone further than many. With his only losses to men of GSP and Matt Hughes's caliber, equal if not bigger legends of the game. His attitude towards the fight game had earned him a spot as one of Dana White's coveted favorites. But eventually, his time would come, as it does for everybody. And soon, the record books would be full of continuous red L's. Fueled perhaps by self-delusion and the mindset that got him to his glory, Penn's decline was vicious, to the point where Dana himself publicly called for him to retire. I want BJ Penn to retire. Dude, you've won belts in two different weight classes. You're one of the greatest ever. You became a huge superstar. He's too tough for his own good. He's taken a lot of damage, and I don't want to see him take any more. Scathing words, but ones that would not be heeded by Hawaii's own. It was a message dismissed by a man still stuck in his past, forcing Dana to play the cruelest of cards as his final play. Matched with Mexico's El Pantera, Yaya Rodriguez was a punishment of sorts, a sacrifice to the MMA gods not just to propel a prospect, but force an aging vet into retirement. An expected beatdown by all, we all knew what it represented. At just 24, the flashy striker was the new breed, the next generation of killers coming through the ranks. Penn, at this time, had nothing more than the name value that his opponent could take stock from. It was simply a death sentence. The gods of this game rarely pull a punch for anybody, and Penn would be brutalized. Rodriguez, of course, would go on to achieve high success in this game. 
becoming the divisional interim king for a brief time. His rise built on a hit list of contenders that BJ had become a part of. From a business perspective, his sacrifice was worth it, but the nature of the loss wouldn't deter him from fighting as he saw out his contract into 2019, finishing an arduous and bloody career with seven straight losses. Are you done? Are you done fighting 100%? I'm done. You're done? I'm done 100%. It was hard for me to get out after being in there for 20 years. I mean, that's your identity. Yeah. And then I just kind of got into trying to be a father. But I do think all the blood, all the tears, all the sweat, all the ups and downs, all the good media, all the bad media, all of that was to prepare me for, for, you know, for this. Johnny Big Rig Hendrix's late career tenure may not have been as brutal, but still wouldn't save him from being one of Dana White's many sacrificial lambs. The American was once a valiant trailblazer of the 170 pound division, in a time in which George Rush St. Pierre ruled the kingdom with an iron fist. But Hendrix would be the first to truly contest him in the cage since the early days. The first time GSP had faced true adversity. A bout that continues to be discussed to this day its result remains contested as a robbery of the highest order. Does anybody here think that Johnny Hendricks didn't win the fight? Did you see George get smashed and hurt in the first round? It's about damage. I'm, I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. Dana had fought in Johnny's corner when he needed it most, a rare sight, and a series of events that would make GSP walk away from the game for four years. And filling that void, Hendricks would eventually find the gold he so long desired and deserved but the fall following it will coincide with a historical event in the company's history. It's with great pride today that we officially announce the details of our new anti-doping policy. Do you think Hendrix was on something? Johnny's downfall was drastic. His changes in physique pointing to a likely use of performance enhancers throughout his prime. After a following four losses in his next five, Dana had not only run out of patience with the former king, but uses for him entirely. Penned in against the eraser Paolo Costa on the undercard of GSP's anticipated return in 2017. It was to some a form of poetic justice, and others a death sentence with the cruelest of conclusions. His once adversary now headlining to become a two division champ, as Johnny's aging body and career would peter out in one final showdown. Maybe they want me to beat him so they can cancel his contract. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many different ways. Maybe they want him to whoop my ass so they can get rid of me. <laughs> Costa's meteoric rise as an undefeated 25-year-old phenom proved the matchup served as nothing more than a transfer of stock from one to the other. A chance for Dana to prop up another new star. And of course, that's how this tale would end for the American-born. Brutally finished inside the second round, Hendrick's sacrifice was nothing more than another cog in the UFC's ever-growing machine. Donald Cerrone's story would serve a similar purpose. Whilst Cowboy may now be one of the newest inductions into the hallowed Hall of Fame, his career decline will ever be forgotten, and it was one used by Dana White to propel his shiny new toys whenever possible. As one of the longest standing members of the roster, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking that gone as some level of respect from the men upstairs. But when none other than the notorious Conor McGregor makes his anticipated return, the appeal of a gargantuan payday in exchange for a bloody sacrifice is an alluring opportunity. I've had I've had my back and forth with Donald throughout the years. Right, the last time we spoke to each other, I even saw each other would have been at that press conference many years ago. And as time has gone on, it's hard not to respect Donald right now at this stage. And he has my respect. And and although there will be blood spilled, it will not be bad blood. Thank you, Connor. And you're right. You do bring the biggest paydays. You do bring the biggest eyes. Why not have Cowboy Welcome, with Donald. You? Welcome. You've heard it. You've heard that multi-million dollar payday, and I'm delighted for you, bro. Yeah, seriously, truly. UFC 246 was the stage. And perhaps in another time, it would be a skirmish of epic proportions. But Cerrone's time in the sun had been and gone, with two losses in a row to Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson sending him on a downwards trajectory. It was the perfect layup for a man like Connor to catapult himself once more onto the limelight. The tension in this building is indescribable. If you're not here, I'd imagine around the world as you're watching, it feels pretty tense wherever you may be. Donald Cowboy Cerrone, it is all in front of him here tonight as he tries to spring the upset against the prohibitive favorite, former two division champion, the notorious Connor McGregor. Tonight's fight clock is brought to you by Motello. Dana had played the game perfectly. His star man back in form under the bright lights with a 40 second finish, no less. To the casual fans, McGregor was well and truly back. 
But on the other side of that coin, Cerrone would leave as a man with a fat stack of cash by his side for yet another tear in his ever-decaying legacy. And this wasn't the first time, too. Cerrone had been pitted as the sacrificial lamb before against the at-the-time rising Darren Till, a man who many had billed to be the next Notorious. And for a time, he would match that level of star power with all the natural charisma and fighting ability Dana White could ask for. So obviously insisted on doing this interview with the schmo with your shirt off. When does the male modeling start? <laughs> Never. I mean, have you seen this day to me? I'm fucking ugly, cunt. It doesn't start, schmo, does it? You got more chance to me, mate, than you are but ugly. So, so, yeah, I'm gonna try that. So. <laughs> Cerrone would be the Scouser's big step up, and he himself knew he was taking a risk in fighting down the ladder. Well, of course, I mean, it's a fight. Anything can happen. So I can't just say I'm gonna go out there and steamroll the kid. He has just as much opportunity and chance of winning as I do. So it's a fight. Um, but I don't regret any decisions I made. It was a risk that, at least for Cerrone, didn't pay off. Dana had used his name in the hopes of recapturing the Irishman's magic. And of course, it would work to a T. Darren's meteoric rise would be propelled further as a result, going on to fight for the welterweight title against Tyron Woodley. And in losing that bout, eventually his time would come too. Years later, and after failing to reach those high expectations, Dana would find the same use for Till as he did for the man he once fought. Another stepping stone for the next and now current middleweight champion.